Hey guys, uh, welcome to RMA Fire. Today we're going to be talking about um, basic particle setups inside of Houdini and understanding what particles are, how to use them, and all that fun stuff. So we've got a pig head here, it usually comes in with the add shader on, so I'm turning it off just for the sake of demonstrations. And I'm going to bring in a pop network. As soon as I bring, as I attach the pop network, we see that it scatters points onto the geometry. We come in here, we get the basic particle setup, which is the output. Output doesn't really, it's just an, the same thing as selecting here, but we sometimes you want to add gravity and other stuff here. The pop object, which is the default thing that you've got to plug into the pop solver as the pop object for like controlling collisions and, and physical um, parameters. And then the pop source, this is our source. This is where things are coming in. And this is just for merging additional things. Like we could actually get rid of it um, and plug this in directly. We're not going to be using it right now. Um, for the pop source, we have scattered onto surface. So we have points scattered onto the surface of the geometry. We can scatter points onto all of the points, which means every single point of our geo is going to have one point and um, in scatter onto all of the points, which is basically what we have right now, but that's very usable, useful if we're using, we've got points instead of geometry. So basically what it is, is particles are just points, points here. So if we select scatter and we plug it in, we're gonna see that our geometry has been turned to points. So we could actually plug this in here, select points or all points or scatter onto this point and Houdini is going to allow us to control the points and the movement of the points. If we do points from volume, this is a good option if you guys want to visualize, you know, have, have the geometry move um, with points in the inside and animate all of those, you know, play, play, with, play with the particles. So I'm gonna have a come back in here and I'm gonna turn our guide geometry off so that it's easier to see what's going on. And we are going to look at these parameters real quick. We've got, so we've got the birth, which has an impulse activation of one and a life expectancy of 100 with zero variation. The attributes, um, we'll, we'll see this is very important because we have, um, we, uh, we actually don't have velocity yet, but I'll show you guys the big difference once we add the velocity. And the stream on the bind we're not using right now. So first things first, um, we're going to visualize what um, what our source scatter onto surface looks. So basically points are just being born onto the surface of the geometry and they are staying there because we have a huge life expectancy. So if we set this to a 2, it's not going to fill the geometry quite as much. Um, see, they begin to die. And if we, we don't have any sources effect, any forces affecting them, so that's why it's static. If we add a pop force, and a little bit of force in here, then we're going to get particles that begin to move. Okay. Um. A useful tip is I prefer personally to create the scattered points first sometimes, you know, um, because I can control it here and sometimes I, I just, I just for personal preference, I, I like to work with points. Uh, it just makes things uh, a bit fun for me. And with points, you can come here onto the birth tab and we have to tell it to all points and then come here to the birth now we have essentially very simple very similar thing from what we had um it's just that our point our uh our particles are being emitted from the scattered points on that that we set up so what if we don't want these trails to be seen like this well there's multiple things that we can try um the, the first thing i want to teach you guys is on the impulse activation, if we use a dollar F, uh, we can use expressions in here to control um, when the particles are born. So what just happened here? Basically, what's happening is that we're emitting particles only for the first two frames. 
and we only have a life expectancy of two. So we want to increase this to say like a hundred, and then that way those particles are only born on the first two frames. And then they live for quite a bit of time. But you can see that we, we are left with the same amount of particles that are born only on the first two frames. If we middle click here, we, we see we have a thousand points and we back here, we see that we also have a thousand points and we also have a thousand points here. So we're playing with the same amount of points that we've got from the beginning. I'm just gonna say delete channel and set it back to a one so that we can go back to testing things out. So the sake of this uh, introductory tutorial for particles is for us to understand that really what we're dealing with here are points. And we can use the PopNet to either multiply these points or keep the amount of points and move them in specific ways um, so that we get interesting things like this. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm gonna show you guys an example of what happens when we import the velocity. And if we import the velocity, then we're gonna be able to actually inherit the velocity and actually use the velocity that, that, that we have uh, onto the geometry. So this is, I'm gonna use a transform sub, attach it here and do dollar f, and I'm gonna multiply the dollar f times the five. That means that our geometry is gonna be rotating like that. You want to toggle on the real life toggle so that it doesn't move super fast. What that means is that if your computer is fast, then it's going to process it super fast. Okay. Um, we're going to put in the, the scattered points and now we've got a bunch of scattered points rotating. And then what we want to do is add a trail and in the trail, we're going to compute the velocity. So right now, Houdini is computing how fast we're moving. And if we come into our geometry spreadsheet, we're gonna see that we actually have the velocity values now. If we come back here, we do not have them. Here with the trail sub, we do have them because we're computing them. So that means that we can come onto the PopNet. And this is where the fun starts to happen. Since we are telling Houdini to use the inherent velocity, then boom we're gonna be able to create some very, very fun effects such as this one. If we get rid of this pop force though, it's not gonna look quite as interesting. It looks kind of, I mean, depending for what you're going for, it looks beautiful. But if we add the pop force, you can see that we can start to add forces and pile up forces here. So you can see that we've already have that incoming velocity with an additional force. And we can start to pile up different, like for example, a pop drag is gonna grab the effect and slow it down and make it feel a little bit more slow. Um, let me come here, all my points, I'm gonna reduce the amount of uh, scattered points that we have so that it's not so intensive and we can see what's happening a little bit more. So the drag kind of slows it down and um, And we've got uh, our particles set up, you know, like we, we already have, we, we've got them moving and actually it, it was looking a little bit more interesting when we had more pointing here. So I'm just gonna do a quick. Quick sim right here. Reduce the amplitude a little bit. Okay, so our rule of thumb is now once we start to do the particles like this, you want to file cache. That's usually what you want to do in production and you want to cache cache them to disk. If you guys want to see some examples on how to cache things, please leave a comment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab an all, place it right here and check out what we've got. So we've got 
right here, when you middle click, you see that we've got the position and the velocity. Those are just two attributes. And before we computed the velocity, we didn't even have the velocity. So now we've got the velocity. Now, after we bring it into the pop network, we've got age, air resistance, bed, force, all these other attributes that we can play with. So I'm gonna use the velocity to color our particles. So we're gonna bring in the color here and I don't want them to be just white, right? I want them to be um, ramping based on an attribute. So doll, uh, lowercase v means velocity. So right now our particles are ramping based on the velocity. Mm. I'm gonna make this something something kind of like like that looks kind of cool right so once we hit play you will see that based on the velocity our particles are going to start to change color And you don't have to limit yourself to velocity. You can use the age. You can use and test all of these other attributes that we've got here. Um, you've got the age of the particles. So that way as they die, they change color. Um, and we'll be back with... This is basically an introduction to particles and setting things up. And we'll be back with more.